My name is Lieutenant Terrence Fiernes, a Filipino-American surface warfare officer in the U.S. Navy. I was born in the Philippines and immigrated to the U.S. when I was 12 years old in 1999. In 2010, after years of struggling to fund my college education, I joined the Navy as an undesignated seaman, one of the service's lowest ranks. This was a way to earn both citizenship and a way to continue my education. Since then, through hard work, strong mentorship, and a bit of luck, I earned both my bachelor's in history and an officer's commission. I've since sailed throughout the Pacific on numerous operations representing the United States and working closely with our foreign partners. I'm Petty Officer Mangubat. I am a logistics specialist currently in Bahrain. I was originally from Olongapo City, um, Philippines, and I grew up there. I lived there for 13 years. <laughs> I'm Lieutenant Teague. I am a surface warfare officer in the United States Navy, originally from North Pole, Alaska. First and only ship was USS Steedham, so stationed out of Japan, moved there, and then we homeport shipped over to San Diego. And then I concluded that tour a couple months ago, and now I'm here in Newport at the War College at a planning course. The fact that the three of us are where we are today is no accident. In my lifetime, I've enjoyed opportunities that my dad and those before him could never have imagined. Because as recently as 50 years ago, Filipinos were limited to serving only as stewards, attending to the material needs of naval officers. Even though Asians and Filipinos make up less than 5% of the Navy today, we're here to stay and we're here to serve proudly with our fellow Americans. Meet the Mercado family. They have served in the United States Navy for three generations. In the beginning, everybody were, were in the, enlisted as a steward's man, and everybody wanted to change rate. But uh, I had a good opportunity to change right away after boot camp. Well, I think his generation, uh, you know, my father's generation kind of paved the way for the rest of us. You know, I, prob I feel I didn't see any discrimination. It was you were advanced and you do, did well based on how hard you worked. And, and that is probably in large part due to those men uh, back then who enlisted and joined the Navy to serve and had to put up probably with a lot more than I had to. The United States began recruiting sailors in the Philippines as early as 1901. American public opinion and Navy officials saw Filipinos as subjects who had to be civilized. In this environment, stewards prepared and served meals to officers, cleaned their living quarters, and washed their clothes. But due to ongoing civil rights protests, the Navy began phasing out African Americans from stewardship positions and almost exclusively filled those with Filipinos. Although service in the Navy helped lift thousands of Filipino families out of poverty and set them on the path towards citizenship, stewards experienced mistreatment and abuse Change came under Admiral Elmo Zumwalt's tenure as Chief of Naval Operations. In 1971, he directed the Navy to restructure its recruitment processes, access to occupational fields, and treatment of minorities in the fleet. This led to the proverbial opening of the floodgates that has resulted in tremendous opportunity for Filipinos to advance to positions previously unimaginable. Ravello says he owes his success to his dad, Ben Ravello, a retired U.S. Navy chief. Back in the day, he says, a glass ceiling limits Filipinos from achieving what he has achieved today. Well, I kind of feel that, you know, through his sacrifice and the, the sacrifice of serving the captain of the ship, he has allowed me to become the captain of the ship. I have a buddy in uh, flight school. We're both Filipinos and we both report to flight school. And his dad just like, I think his dad was uh, in the Marines you know, infantrymen, but he was just looking at us and he was like, back in my day, like this wasn't a thing. Like he was just looking at us. I think me and him were both wearing our khakis with, you know, butter bars on. And he was like this, he was just, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. And he was like, I, I didn't really extend, understand because I was just like, oh, this is just our path that like we picked. It wasn't like, and it wasn't a big deal to us, but I'm sure that was a big deal to see his like son and another Filipino dude just like in pilot training, which is insane. 
It's difficult to imagine how recently these negative attitudes towards Filipinos had existed. I knew about discrimination against African Americans, but I never thought Filipinos were also subject to that practice. Actually, I wanted to join the Navy because I was in ROTC in Japan when I was in Kinnick. Um, I liked the Navy and I'm familiar with it because my dad was prior uh, prior Navy. I just thought that when you go in, it's just a normal, normal life from there. I'd never experienced racism in high school because, you know, it never really mattered what you are as long as you were like, you know, the, a cool person, um, not really mean anything like that. I think you take it one step at a time. You know, you, you, you transfer, you do your best, you look up and say, hey, maybe I could be that guy or gal. And then when you're given that opportunity, you say, wow, isn't this great? I do that if you worked hard, you know, you can get somewhere, but it's kind of cool just seeing, um, you see that Filipinos have like risen through the ranks. I don't think he's Filipino, but you know, you have guys like Islanders, like. Admiral Gubin Tao Tao and stuff like that. So, but it made like three star. I think actually more of the concern was just my background of, you know, everybody was like, oh, you have to be like an academy grad to make Admiral, but I realized that wasn't true either. Within Filipino culture, we embrace this value of bayanihan. And this roughly translates to communal work, coming together to accomplish a common goal, or most poetically, lifting each other up. In the Navy, this manifests in a lot of different ways and can sometimes be misunderstood as favoritism. Um, there's a lot of people that doesn't like us being Filipino and helping each other out. So I, I know you know about Filipino Mafia. You know, the whole like, um, there's Filipinos just helping each other out again, whatever. Uh, the big thing there is like for my job as the division officer was supply. Like supply had uh, Filipino people that, I mean, if you, you, you really need to be in touch with supply to actually get the, you know, the parts you need um, or just to get the process of the parts going. And, and you know, that's great to have uh, on your side, being able to just talk with the logistics specialist. We're getting treated okay. You know, we're getting treated um, just like the same as anyone else would. But when there's still some people stuck on that mentality of, you know, you're only getting there because you're Filipino. I just want them to get out of that mentality. Stop looking at me that way when I'm achieving something and you're just thinking that it's only because you're Filipino. You know, that's the only thing I'm finding negative in the Navy. But other than that, I'm getting treated well because people with that, that mindset actually treats me how I'm supposed to be treated based on my qualification. Despite the progress the military has made in recent decades, stereotypes continue to persist. Some carry on as jokes, more or less benign in nature, but some can be pretty negative and consequential. Oh, this Asian should be good at math or something like ridiculous like that. You know, I mean, as a surface warfare officer, you're doing a bunch of and, you know, officer of the deck math, like quick math in your head. And I actually wasn't that great at that. We're Filipino, we help each other out because we understand our language better. Some of us can speak English very well. You know, I get that. Some some of them rely more on the Filipinos that's been longer, you know. Don't you dare tell me that I'm Filipino, um, I'm Filipino and I get all these things because I'm Filipino. I hate that weak mindset. Get what you need to freaking get because you do what you're supposed to do. When taken to the extreme, these kinds of anti-Filipino prejudices are antithetical to American ideals of equality for all. But as we've seen in the news lately, it can still go much farther than that. Unwarranted attacks against Asian Americans are on the rise, and this isn't anything new. These actions send the message that Asian Americans just don't belong. And this is a callback to our country's painful history. It repeats an old and tired way of thinking. But looking at the official stances of large institutions like the military, a place where men and women of proven talent and skill are promoted despite their ethnic background, or the government, even with all of its flaws and partisanship, or hearing the voices of millions of fellow Americans across the country. It's comforting to know that those who would commit these crimes seem wildly outnumbered. 
If there's anything the military can offer to the national conversation about race in America, it's that absolutely anyone can learn to look past their differences and learn to work together. And you have to set aside what, you know, what differences you have, different backgrounds where you come from, different races, you have to set that aside to get whatever's done, uh, whatever the mission is at the time to get it done, right? And though it's not the most perfect analogy, the Filipino experience teaches us to keep hoping and to keep fighting for that brighter future.